we closed up um, 2019 uh, and had a really good year as a business. We haven't officially released our numbers, so I'll just keep them kind of generalized. So um, North America, uh, for context, did you know well over 200 million in revenue. It's you know over 30 percent year-on-year growth, and um, you know as a byproduct of the the great work that our that our incredible people are doing and some of the really interesting innovations we we've had come out. Um, you know we've been able to kind of maintain a really strong growth trajectory in what can be a, a challenging ad tech marketplace. So that's been great. Um, uh, you know, when we take a look at some of the different products we've been working on, so, you know, I think I, when I watch the different videos on, on Beat uh, and, uh, and read the different industry trades, things like data are a huge topic. So, you know, over the last two plus years, we've been working on cookie-less uh, data solutions that we're really bringing uh, into the marketplace in a pretty strong way right now. Um, and, you know, the reason for this, Andy, is that, uh, you know, today as it stands in the United States, um, only 44% of all impressions have cookies associated with them, which means that well over half of them do not. And what that means is um, no cookie-based uh, targeting, optimizations, no multi-touch attribution, no frequency capping, okay? So, you know, when you, when you think about it that way, uh, there needs to be a change in how we're targeting as an industry. So, um, you know, on, on uh, one side, we've come out with some really interesting IP-based solutions, you know, uh, generally for programmers, where we can target at the household level based on the authenticated IP address. Uh, and uh, and see what type of programs they're watching and target a specific programmer um, to those households that might be heavy consumers of a competitive product. And then we can uh, track on the back if they actually tuned in or not, right? So that's one example of cookie-less targeting. Another one is called contextual data mining, where you know for years our AI has been um, seeing every ad impression we're delivering, associating the brand in that impression to the context of the article, in which it's being delivered, um, and determining which content performs best for what type of advertisers, right? And all of this is available in the cookie-less world. So data has been really big for us. Um, in terms of ad product, so I think a lot of folks know us for our Teed Studio product, which is taking standard assets and creatively optimizing them for the mobile consumer, right? And it's sensational and it works really well. Um, we noticed through the years that um, the, the type of platform where you usually get customized creative is the social platforms, right? And if we're talking social platforms, it's, it's you know, primarily Facebook and Instagram. So we developed uh, a new technology where you can seamlessly take your social assets, we'll repurpose those exact same assets on our platform and syndicate it to our 230 million uniques across the United States on tier one publishers. Um, and when you look at the actual delivery and performance of these ads on our platform versus a, an Instagram or a Facebook, we usually um, deliver 30% on average uh, more efficient pricing than those guys, right? So that's been an amazing product that we're seeing huge scale on right now. Seven odd years ago, um, you know, when we launched in the Americas, I mean, you know, for a little while, and it was just me in a coffee shop, and then I convinced some people to come on and join me, um, and then, you know, we continued to grow the team and continue to grow the product, and for years, we were kind of educating the marketplace on, on what it was and why it was important to leverage uh, video within the editorial well or editorial feed on tier one publishers, right? The, the Condes, the, the Hearst, the Meredith, the ESPN, ABC, Disney's of the world. So that's become totally mainstream, right? I mean, everybody's used to seeing them as a consumer. Consumers tend to like them a lot because they're not forced to watch anything like you would, you would get in a TV ad or, or in a standard pre-roll. And most publishers now, it's been a fully baked product that they've been outselling in the marketplace themselves and taking our demand for years, right? So, so I think now it's about the optimization of, of the creative because the performance is already so extraordinary, right? So um, when we're out talking to our brand partners and educating our publishers, um, we want them to, um, to hold the torch of you know, custom creative for mobile consumers because it's an even better experience for the mobile consumer, of course, and then also uh, for the brand itself. So Jim, you, you guys are part of a big company in yeah. Altice, a big global company. Uh, tell us sort of some of those benefits and, um, uh, and how that works. Sure, yeah, I mean, we were, so we were acquired by Altice about two and a half years ago, uh, like you mentioned. And, um, you know, when, when, you, when you take a look from the outside, right, if I, if, I can, if I can take myself out of my shoes, 
and um, and 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 look at the the situation. You know, you have this you know this very fast growing um, you know digital ad tech company, um, and then you have a you know a very well established global telecom you know kind of coming together as as one. And, um, and, you know, at, at times, I think when you've seen that happen in our industry, it, it's been a challenge, right? Um, you know, our experience in this, um, you know, was opposite. Uh, you know, these, the Altice folks, um, uh, you know, had seen some of the interesting things that we were doing, and they were able to give us additional resources to turbocharge our business, right? Um, and Altice also has sensational data assets, right? So when I'm talking about our ability to, um, uh, to track set-top box viewership data and target at the household level, that's coming from Altice data, right? Um, and I think, you know, we, we were showing a really nice trajectory um, before we were acquired by Altice, hence, you know, why, why, why the acquisition happened. Um, but since it happened, we've seen uh, a further acceleration of it. And so, you know, we've been, we've been thrilled um, with the partnership and, uh, and, you know, they tell us that they have been too. We have so many, um, so many great products in the market at this point, right? People know us for video. You know, we came out with a next generation kind of uh, immersive uh, next generation display format that's fueled a lot of our growth over the last 12 months. Um, we also have, a, you know, a product, a performance product that's, that's guaranteeing incremental site traffic. We have this new social product where you can, fric you can use frictionless creative. Um, uh, to be repurposed uh, kind of across our entire platform. And, and this, this year, what you're going to see is us having every single one of these products seamlessly talking to one another, right? So when we talk about trying to support um, our brand partners, which we're working with 97 out of the top 100 brands in the U.S. right now, from kind of prospecting all the way to conversion, that's what you're going to see more from us. Um, and we're excited for a great year ahead.